have his promises yes. to tell us what God can do. That's right. So when you face hardship, you yes. face situations, you face things that you don't know how to get through, right. praise God. You need to know that there's a God that yes. says, cast your cares upon yes. me. You need to know that there's a God yes. that's able to handle. You yes. need to know that I can call on him yes. and he's going to listen. Yes. He's going to turn me yes. aside. You need to know, praise God, that when I pray to God, he's listening. Yes. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. But I have to build that kind of wall. The Bible says right. it like this. Right. Faith yes. comes by hearing uh -huh. and hearing by the word. By yeah, the word right. of God. Ooh, yeah. That's how faith comes. Yeah. That means that I need to hear preaching. Yeah. I need to be in the house of God so right. I can hear preaching. Right. I need to read the word of God. Right. Praise right. God. I need to read the word. Because the word of God is the thing that's going to build my faith. That's right. That wall of faith that I'm trying to build up so the devil can't yeah. breach it. Yeah. He can't come into it. The Bible says when he comes in like a flood, the, the Spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against him. How does the Spirit of the Lord raise a standard? When I have built that wall up, when I have built up in prayer, when I have read the word of God, when I have listened to preaching and allow it to, to fortify some things in my heart. Praise Amen. God. I've got to build a wall of faith in my life. Yes. I've got to read the word of God. I've got to let this word of God yes. sink in. That's you see, right. the word of God is more powerful it than is. just words. It is. Right. It right. Is. Sometimes we hear people just speaking words and, yes. you know, people say, uh, talk is cheap but actions proof. Well, the thing about God's words is they are life. They are, they are action. They are. Because the way he created everything yes. is by just speaking it. Yes. Mm. The most powerful things yes. on this world, right. in this earth, are the words of God. Yeah, yeah. Right. It doesn't seem that way. We look at so many other things yeah. that we, we attribute power to, right. but there's nothing more powerful right. than the words of God because That's the right. Bible says we understand that the worlds were framed yeah. by the words of yeah. God. The most powerful thing in this world is the word of God. Yeah. When I'm going through trouble, yeah. all I need is a word. Yeah. When I'm going through situations, all I need is a word. Hallelujah. I have to see evidence. like the word of God. That's right. That's right. And the Bible says it's the word of God that builds up yes. my faith. Yes. Praise Hallelujah. God. I've got to have faith. Yes. There's another side of faith and the other side of faith is just obedience to right. the word right. of God. Right. 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 If you will, praise God, he will. Heaven's our will. ultimate yes. reward. Mm -hmm. And there are things in the word of God that I don't like in my flesh. Yeah. Can I get an honest amen? amen. 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 <laughs> the way that God works on us is he shows us, the Bible says in, uh, in James, it's the mirror of God's word. Yes, right. yes. And you see exactly who you are. Right. Yes. Blemishes you can't hide. It shows you exactly who you are. Yes. You see your shortcomings. Right. And God challenges us yes. not to just yes. be a hearer right. of his word. Right. But to be a doer. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to let this word change. You know why? Because none of us are perfect. That's right. All right. All right. We need the word of God to slice off those edges. Just like, think about this. You know, when you have a sculptor, you ever see anybody that's skillful in sculpting with maybe wood or stone? Right, right. And what they do is they take that, that block of wood or that slab of stone right. and they begin to chisel away. Mm -hmm. And at first you can't see anything. It looks just like a... A slab of stone yeah. or like a piece of wood. Right. But as they begin to apply the skill, Ooh, as they begin to cut things away, yeah. sand things away, yeah. chisel things yeah. away, yeah. all of a sudden yeah. an image comes out that you never thought was there. Yeah. Praise God. And this is what God does. God is chiseling away. Yeah. God is cutting away. Yeah. God is sanding some things. God is blowtorching some things in my life. God is coming at some things hard in my life. And my, my flesh is saying, God, I don't want that. It doesn't feel good. I don't like it. But God is trying to make a masterpiece of your life. Praise God. You don't want to make a masterpiece. And then some things get cut away. Some things have to go. Some things just can't stay there. God's trying to make a masterpiece out of you. And so it takes God cutting 
same way. Praise God. And the way that he cuts away is that we conform. To his, the Bible says, be not conformed to this world. Right, right. But be transformed. That means changed. That's metamorphosis. Let there be a change in you. You know, you think about the butterfly, you know, a caterpillar to a butterfly, a profound difference. One can only get away, get around by crawling on its belly. But now when he becomes a butterfly, the world is his limit. Right, right. Because there's butterflies that go to certain places in the world every year. Fly hundreds, even thousands of miles. Right. When he was just a caterpillar, he couldn't get that far. <laughs> Probably just from that one tree. <laughs> but when the metamorphosis comes, all of a sudden there's a liberty. Right. Where the Spirit of the Lord is. The Bible says there's a liberty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's some things I follow in my life. There's some things I try to struggle with all my life. But when the Spirit of God comes in, it gives me the power, hallelujah, to say no to some things. There's some things that will, that will take you down to hell. And Satan is going to work with you. He's patient too. The Bible says that God is long-suffering. He's long-suffering in that he, he's patient with us, working with us. But Satan's long-suffering too in another way. He's trying to destroy you, so he'll, he'll play the long game with your life. The Bible says that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Sometimes we think it's, it's a person. It's that person. It's that, it's that person that's aggravating me. It's that person I just do not like. I can't stand. There's a spirit at work. There's a spirit at work. Satan is trying to destroy you with a spirit. He's using a person. See, if he, if he can get you angry at that person, if he can get you to harbor that grudge, oh, I can't stand that. What he's doing, he's making you sin. The Bible says plainly, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Stop looking at the individual. Understand that there's a spirit. The Bible says it, it says it like this. He takes them captive at his own will. In other words, like pawns in his hand. The children of disobedience, people that aren't serving God. Satan just grabs them and he can use them in our lives to wreak havoc. And he does. But you have to understand that. That's why, that's why the Bible says, pray for your enemies. Why does Jesus say that? He says, pray for your enemies because you don't know that that person is not being used of the devil. Right, right. And your enemy is God's prodigal. God's working on your enemy. Did you know that? While you might be hating on him, God's working on him. Right. God's drawing them Amen. with cords of love. Right. See, God doesn't have that same animosity that you have towards them. Right. They could be doing some devilish things. Right, right. But God doesn't feel that way about right. them. God loves them just like right. He loves you. You say, How can God love them? Right, right. When they do all that stuff. But God loves them. Yeah. He's patient. Right. He's compassionate. Yes, he and so God wants us to allow His love to work through yes. us. Praise yes. God. But the only way that can happen is if you're building some walls, right. some integrity in your life. Yes. Praise God. By taking His word and doing it. That's the other side of faith. One side of faith is what can God do for me? What does his promise say? And I need to believe that. The other side of faith is what does he tell me to do? Even those things that my flesh doesn't want to do. Mm. Praise God. You know, you, there's some other walls you need to build. You need to build some walls of prayer in your life. You see, what's deceptive is that Sometimes we're in church, but we don't pray. Right, right. We know to pray. We know to trust and depend on God. But we don't actually, when we're faced and confronted with situations, actually get down and pray. Some things we don't pray about. Right. You know, there's an old song that says, oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry not some things, but everything to God. Okay. Listen, I want to get to the place that I don't just X some things off and say, well, this ain't none of God's business, okay. this is my business. <laughs> no, no, no. I can take, I can do, I can handle this. I know what the word of God says, but you know, this is this is this, this. You know, this is this is okay. When you start making exceptions in your life, it ain't just you making exceptions. Right. It's the devil whispering, yeah, that's it. You remember when he said to Eve? Right. Yep. You're not gonna, you're not, you're not gonna die. <laughs> 
in direct opposition to what God said. And if you listen to him long enough, he's going to oppose verbatim what God says, the very opposite. That's exactly what he did. He said the very opposite of what God said. You're not going to surely die. Go ahead and do it. It's all right. And see, the way the devil gets you to come down, that for that wall in your life to fall, that wall of obedience, hallelujah. The way he gets that to fall is say, that's eh, not all that important. That's, you know, it, that, it don't take all that. Because you can't see what he's doing. Right. He's stealing from right. you. Yes. He's chopping down that wall at the bottom. Yes. Hallelujah. And you can't ever see it. Right. Because you're you're thinking in the flesh, hey, yes. it, it doesn't take all. It does, that's not so important. Yes. Even though God might blatantly say it. Yeah. Right. The devil is never on God's side. Right. He's right. never right. pushing God's agenda. Right. He's always pushing a destructive yes. agenda. Right. And you have to see yes. it for what he is. Yes. Praise right. God. Right. Because the more he lets you or convinces you to let down on, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, you'll find yourself doing the big stuff. Right. And you'll still be saying, well, it's okay. Mm. Come on. That's how he works. Right. The Bible says about the serpent. Listen, the very first time we introduced, introduced to the devil in any way, the Bible says what he chose to use to come to Eve, the deceiver, was the most subtle. That means sneaky. Right, right. Deceptive beast of the field. He didn't choose something that was just clumsy and, you know, he chose something that was sneaky. Could do it in such a way that you didn't even know what was going on. Right, right. And that's what deception is all about. But the way we stop from being deceived is if we're having a prayer like, I'm yes. building a wall of prayer. Yes. The Bible says that, that uh, Cornelius, yes. when he prayed and gave alms, yes. That went up to God as a memorial. Yes, it did. In other words, it told God, this is Cornelius. Was it anything but what he was doing? Yes. It got God's attention. Yes, it did. See, sometimes you pray, sometimes you're praying in your prayer closet. God says, when you pray, you don't have to tell everybody, hey, I'm about to pray. <laughs> I'm holy. <laughs> Watch me. Watch me. God says, God says, when you get ready to pray, go into your prayer closet. Right, right. Nobody needs to know. That's right. He says, when you pray in secret, God will reward you openly. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. See, this is a, this is, these are part of this, this is part of that intimacy with God. Yes. And, and you get to know things that, that I can't even share with you from the pulpit. That's right. Mm -hmm. Some things I can't even put in words. When you begin to have that relationship with God, when you're praying, God can talk to you in ways that you and God understand. You know how it is, husband and wife. You can say some things, you can see it in public, you don't want to say anything, you can say some things, and you guys communicate in a way that nobody else knows what you're talking about. Yeah, that's right. Well, God does the same thing. <laughs> when we get close to him, because you got to remember, okay. if you have the Holy Ghost, he's living on the inside. That's the most intimate relationship that a person can possibly have. God designed it that way. Yeah. He wanted to be on the inside, not just on the outside. Right. There's no other relationship like that on earth. That's right. And that's how he perfects us. That's right. But it takes us purposing in our heart that I'm going to build this wall of prayer. And just on that subject, I just want to say, we're going to be starting a 15-minute-a-day prayer at 6 o'clock in the morning. And we're going to have a prayer line, a conference call line. You can jump onto that. And if you're at work or whatever, you can just come in, you know, just for a minute or two and go back out if you're at work or whatever. We want to do this as a church. Right. Because there's strength. There is. When you meet your morning with your brothers and sisters praying, yes. hallelujah. And maybe you toss your prayer into the to the uh, to the ring. Yes. And everybody's praying for your prayer. The thing that's burdened in you, the thing that made you lose sleep that night. That's right. There's power in that. Praise that's God. Right. We want to encourage prayer. Yes. Because there's nothing like talking to God right. to get to know God. Yes. Right. Praise God. There's like I said, there's things I can I can just extol the benefits of prayer. But until you're doing it on that level consistently, where God is talking to you in a way, praise God. You know, I think some people, there wasn't medicine all along, all the time. You know, Brother Ralph talked about some, some, some medicines that he was taking, but there, there was a time that there wasn't any of that stuff. Was God's hands bound? No. 
God is able to do and to cure every ailment that man can have. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. He made these bodies. And he says to, for us to cast, to throw our cares That's upon right. him because he cares. Yes, he does. And so prayer is that opportunity. Prayer is that thing that God has given us. That's right. So that we're able yes. to be strengthened. That's right. Hallelujah. I've got to build a wall of prayer. I've got to build a wall of faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I've got to build a wall of integrity. Yes. Let me tell you something. There's the word of God that we put into place. But here's something the word of God says. It says, neither give place to the devil. Yes. Why does Paul talk to church people like that? He says, don't give place to the devil. If you give place to the devil, he's going to take it. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. You know, there are salesmen back in the day. Nowadays, I think that it's probably dangerous for a salesman to try to do that. Door-to-door -door salesman, oh, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what they would do, an old technique, but they would be talking to you, and they'd put their toe in the door so you couldn't slam the door in their face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we... We can't give Satan space because he would right. do just that. He will. Right. He's right. looking for he's he's looking for an avenue. He's looking for a way in. Yes. And so we've got to be on our toes. We got to build some integrity. There's certain things that you need to set up in your life so that Satan can't take advantage. That's right. That's right. These are some common sense things. There's yes. there's some things I tell men. I, I I wouldn't be you know the vice president yes. does this. They came out you know shortly after the election. But he does not go to dinner. Now, as a professional person, that's kind of a hard thing to even imagine because there's a lot of meetings he has and things like that. He will not meet with a woman alone unless his wife is there. All the way up to the vice president. Now, people try to knock him, but then he don't do that for too long because all the women that are married say, well, you know, I don't want my husband doing that either. Because how many things start with a meal? Praise God. But in our own lives, there are things that apply to you that don't apply to me. But God wants us to build some integrity. Because if you don't think about it beforehand, Satan's already planning. He's already planning. Looking for that opening. But we build some integrity. There's some things I will not do. Some things I will, some places I will not go. Everybody doesn't have to have that same conviction, but I'm putting some convictions in my life. See, here's the thing that God does. As you get to know God, as you're serving God, God will talk to you. As you're praying, yes, as you're putting that wall up, yes, as you're reading the word of God, right, building right, that wall up, right. as your faith is being established, right. and then God's going to talk to you about yes, your integrity. Yes, he will. And there are some things in your life that your neighbor's not going to do because he doesn't have to do. You know, I, I remember... Um, years ago, I was I was talking to somebody, and it, it depends on what your thing was. Sometimes, if you had a thing with alcohol, if you had a thing with drugs, if you had a thing with pornography, or whatever your thing was, right, right. when you come to God, you've got to wall those things off. Right. Right. You've got to wall off because Satan's going to always attack you in that area. He's going to continue. He, here's what, here's what Jesus says. He says when an evil spirit, not saying an evil spirit, <laughs> but just this example gives us an idea of how the devil works. Yes. God just kind of shines some light, gives right. us some insight. He says when an evil spirit comes out of a person, mm -hmm. he goes and gets, he comes back to see it swept and garnished, but if it's empty, he goes and gets seven demons worse than himself. Very. And they come back into that person. And see, what the devil's trying to do always yeah. Is to take you back. Yes, right. If you were a drug addict, you're coming back to drug land. Okay, okay. I'm going to get you. Okay. He's going to keep on coming. He's going to keep on coming. He's going to keep on coming. When pressures of life, hey, you can try this. Right. Get some relief over here. Right. He's going to keep on coming. Right. He's not going to stop. Right. So you've got to build a wall right. of integrity right. around you. Yeah. There's some right. things you have to say, right. I'm not going to do. I'm not going to go. Okay. So when he brings that, you have a defense up. All right. The Bible says it like this. When the enemy comes in like a flood, right. when he overwhelms you, right. in whatever area he does that, right. usually it's in a familiar area where you have weakness. Familiar. When he overwhelms you, yeah. the Spirit of God will raise up a standard, but you have to build that standard yourself. Yeah, you. mm. yeah. All right. 
The wall, you got to build that yourself. That's your own personal wall. You've got to build that. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen on its own. No, right. You have got to build that. Praise God. You've got to build it. You've got to see it coming. You know, God warns the watchman on the tower in Ezekiel 33. He says, the watchman on the tower. He said, if you, that's the person that's on the walled city, he'd see a far off. One of the reasons they had a wall, too, is because, you know, it was pretty much flat for a lot of the area. But on the wall, the person could see in a distance. When he saw a dust cloud coming really fast, a big one, it was an opposing army, perhaps, coming. So he warned everybody down below, said, hey, an army's coming, prepare. Shut the gate. Right. But God says this to the watchman. And we type this to pastors many times. But God says, if you don't warn the people, their blood is on your hands. Mm. And I say to you that if you, if, you know, God will speak to us. God will give us warning. Sometimes you have to take precautions in your life. That's right. But if you don't take precautions, okay. then it's on you. That's right. That's right. Praise God. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard. But the standard that he raises is the one that you've helped to build. Ooh, yeah. Amen. I've got to build the walls in my life. These are the things that protect me. Praise God. These are the things that protect me from the enemy's attempts to take me out. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. If he can break through those walls, if he can break those walls down. If they're weak, then he can pull you back to where you were at. How many want to go back? I'm not going back. Praise God. I'm going to stand strong. I'm going to build the walls. I'm going to allow God to work in my life like he wants to. Praise God. And the way that I allow God to work in my life is by taking an active command. Praise God. At one point, the Bible says that Sam Sanballat and Tobiah, they said to Nehemiah, come on down off the wall. We want to talk with you. <laughs> and Nehemiah answered he says the work that we're doing is great and we can't come down we can't waste time with you right, right. and the enemy wants to, you to come down he wants you to stop what you're doing right. he wants to bring you back into that place yes, he, he wants to tempt you once again in that area mm -hmm. he wants to work on you mm -hmm. because he never ever accepts that you're a child of God That's right. he thinks that with enough pressure mm -hmm. enough pain enough situations in your life you're going to turn back yes. to those weak and yes. beggarly elements. Yes. But somebody needs to stand today. Yes. Somebody needs to let the devil know that yes. I'm building it in my life. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I'm going to let God be true in my life. Yes. I'm going to build walls of integrity. Yes. I'm going to build walls of faith. Yes. I'm going to build walls of the word of yes. God. And allow God to be the strength yes. of my yes. life. Hallelujah. Yes. Let's stand today. Jesus, have Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Have Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God believes that we can make it. Yes. Hallelujah. God knows that we can make it. Yes, he does. But the only way that's going to happen is if there's some active work that's taking right. place right. in our right. 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 There's some things that God won't do. There's some things that God can do, yes. but God won't do. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. There's something that you've got to do. You've got to take this as serious as it possibly can be and say, it's not for everybody else, but this is a very personal thing. Yes. Where are the breaches in my life? Where are those openings in my life that the enemy's trying to run into? He's never satisfied that you're a child of God. He never believes it. He believes if I can make it hard enough on them, if I can entice them enough, if I can convince them, I'm deceptive, I'm good, I'm a slick tongue. If I can talk to them long enough, I can get them. And you've got to know he's doing that. But you've got to talk to somebody long enough. Hallelujah. When you're in his presence, hallelujah. He gives us the power. Praise God. When I'm talking to him, he gives me the power. Hallelujah. To become an overcomer. He gives me the power to be strong, to be strengthened. Hallelujah. Praise God. These altars are open for somebody that's saying, I'm going to build some, some walls in my life that the enemy's not going to be able to penetrate. 
I'm going to get a hold of the word of God like I never have before. I'm going to get a hold of prayer like I never have before. I'm going to get a hold of the Lord like I never have before. I'm going to let God talk to me. Hallelujah, like never before. God, I've determined in my mind. I've determined in my heart. I'm not going back. I'm not going to let the enemy have a victory in my life. I'm not going back. I'm not going back. He's a liar. He's a liar. I recognize the deception. Hallelujah. Oh, God, have your way this morning, God. God, help me to build those areas of my life, God. Hallelujah, God. Strengthen me, Lord. Let me build some walls of integrity, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's no evil thing I'm going to set before my eyes, David says. Hallelujah. There's nothing I'm going to do that's going to trip me up. That allows the enemy to take advantage of me. Hallelujah. I determined that I'm not going to tell a lie. I'm not going to 